Good evening. Is anybody out there watching? Maybe it's just too nice outside and everybody's tending their garden and and doing all those other things that they should be doing. I click, tried to click on it, but I got... Instead, I clicked the X that made it disappear. I'm <laughs> having technical issues here. Good Friday evening, y'all. We're up to seven. Hello, Hannah, Katie. I gotta turn my sound off. Do a terrible echo. Mary and Mona. Hello, Whitney. Hi, Caitlin. Hello, Jim and Paula. Matthew. Matt, I'm so glad you're on here. Are you home yet? Hello, Sarah. Glad you're with us this evening. And Javon. Hello, Wyatt. Hi, Chelsea. Hello, Chase. Hello, all three of you Myerses. Look at there, Don Edwards is on. Wonder if he's home or somewhere in Kansas. Hello, Jimmy. Good for you to be with us. Good for me to be with you, however that works. I think it's all good. Scott and Caitlin are here with us. You know what? We've had several people that have little issues with the sound from time to time, and I, I don't know what to attribute that to. It's, it's not been being the same people. My sound is all the way up. Anita's sound's all the way up. My sound's not all the way up, but I go to blowing the people here uh, out of the... I can't get it to work either. Hi, Matt. Dawn is in Missouri. Maybe you need to work on that some more because we got a bunch of them saying they can't hear. It wouldn't have been covered up. Hello, Janie. Chelsea has sound. Maybe it'll be a, a, a just kind of a rolling thing where everybody gets sound. Wyatt says he has sound. Hard. Scott Case is sitting here and he has sound. I don't know if Don Edwards has sound, but he says he can hear me fine. The Myerses have sound. Katie can hear me. Turn your volumes up. Hello, hello, Robbie. Me either. Caitlin Schooley can hear me. Hello, Joy. Glad you're with us tonight. <sighs> Janie, what do you mean? Does that mean you don't have sound or you do have sound? Say it louder for the backseat. Back. It can't be the fact you're out by Peoria that's making it harder to hear because we're broadcasting from out by Peoria. Hello, Kathy and John. How y'all doing? I'm glad Mary, you're... Mary, if he gets any closer, he's going to be up in his face. Where'd that come from? <laughs> she sent me a text. <laughs> I thought maybe she had the microphone stuck down the little wooden block, but... I don't believe that was it. Um, before we get started tonight, I want to tell you all if you have a uh, prayer request, uh, go ahead and get them put up in the comments. Uh, there's some things that I, I may not have stressed about uh, our meeting Sunday morning. We, we are going to try our very best to 
practice social distancing as they've asked us to and we're only going to set in every other pew and uh, we won't be passing the offering plate we will be uh, taking up an offering but we'll let y'all put it in as you go out the door and uh, there won't be any paper bulletins and so we're going to continue doing our prayer list this way at least for a while now i'm telling you all this to, because we don't want anybody to get sick from being in the group around us um, or anything like that why i thought we had you on here oh we need to add white chuck luck That's strange, Kathy. I don't, I don't know what to tell you about that. Can't hear you on one, but you're loud and clear on the other. I guess watch uh, on the one that you can hear on, I guess. <laughs> I have issues sometimes. My computer don't do what I think I want it to do. And Janie still has no sound. You may just have to read my lips, Janie. I know you set way up to the front. So... I don't know. I don't know. But we are looking forward to being uh, in church Sunday morning. We won't have Sunday school at the church. It'll still be on Facebook Live. And Mary promised that it'll get over with in time for any of y'all to be there by 1030. And we'll try to get started and have uh, uh, as close as we can our normal uh, worship service. at 10.30 on Sunday morning. Hmm. Well, you know what? One of the funny part is I've got sound right here on mine, and I can hear me fine. It's just a little bit of a time lapse, so I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you what, Janie, you, you could use this like a game and try to guess what I'm saying and write it down and then go back and watch it again later and see if the sound works and then you could tell if it was really what you thought I was saying. I don't know. That's really strange. We've had a couple that had issues with sound on, it, on here before, but uh, usually it gets ironed out. I don't know. Keep trying. Keep trying. It says we've only got 19 people watching, but we had way more than that before. So Tonight, let's uh, look at some scripture. Oh, bummer. I, the only thing I can do is go out and go back in. I don't really think that, I don't know how that would help, so. Hey, maybe, maybe that would be the thing to do on the one, ones of you that are having sound issues. Because um, my sound is all the way up. Exit, go out of this page, and then go back to it, and tune back in on our live, and see if you can get sound when you do that. Um, and we're, we're going to have to go on, because we don't want to make this incredibly long we're already nine minutes in Bobby gets it but she don't <laughs> <clears throat> well Janie you're just gonna have to sit closer to Rob goodness you two sit together in church you can do this <laughs> come on it's one more time Janie you can do it you can do it Caitlin's getting sound Scott Scott's got sound but it's live Oh, no, Janie, don't have to set that close to Rob. <laughs> oh, yeah, would you be sitting that close to him in church? Hmm. Hey, you know, we, we haven't been meeting in the building, but it does not change the fact that we're the church. We're really part of something a lot bigger than just Southeast Baptist Church. Uh, it, it's a lot more than just being inside of the four walls of our church. So 
Uh, tonight, as you think about that, I want to look at some scripture in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And where I really want to get tonight is to a point where I talk about Jesus. Y'all know me. I like to talk about Jesus. I, when it comes to talking about Jesus, I have something to say about Jesus. Did that? Did that help, Kathy, when you did that? Did that make it on your uh, laptop? That would be something to try. I know on, on laptops they actually have two places where you can do sound, one on the video and one on your device. So, good. Thank you, John. Yeah, I think it's all got to be on who who's getting it. So, uh, But you know me, I want to talk about Jesus. I want to, I, I've come here with a purpose tonight, and I, I want to talk about Jesus because he is the one whom I know to be uh, worth talking about, and and he has a he has a place to be talked about in every situation. I have I have something to say when it comes to Jesus. He has brought me too far for me to be quiet about it, and so I have something to say. I, I want to talk about Jesus. I want you to know the Jesus that I know. If you don't know him, and and I I want you to know that he he is not. Uh, He's not some little Lord ha-ha waiting for you to mess up and do something wrong, but rather, even when you're wrong, he has loved you enough to uh, lay down his life for you. And the Bible tells us that rarely we find somebody to lay their life down for a good man, but Jesus died for sinners. He died for me and for you. And so I, I, I want you to know I have a purpose to talk about Jesus. And so in 1 Corinthians 15... I hope you found that if you're able to find it in the in the Bible. I have to read it right out of my copy of the Word. He says, beginning at verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preached to you when, when also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you were saved, if you hold fast to the Word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I let delivered to you, First of all, that which I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas and then by the twelve, and after that over five hundred brethren at once, whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. And after that he was seen by James and then by all the apostles, and then last of all, he was seen by me also as being one born out of due time. For I'm the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, we preach. And so you believed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what your word says tonight. I just pray that you'd help it to sink down in our ears and, and to give us hope in the, in the Jesus of the gospel, the one who came uh, from heaven and lived a life here uh, that was extraordinary and a sinless life and that he laid his life down for us so that we could be brought back into fellowship with you. God, we thank you for him. And now as we as we proclaim him and profess him tonight, I just pray that that uh, you would be in our midst. And though we're not together in body, that our group would be together in spirit and that that we would accept what your word says about us. And Lord, help us in the days to come to live so that we would show others that you are the risen Christ, and it's in Him alone we pray, amen. I want to point out a couple of things about this scripture. I've preached this scripture numerous times, but I, every time I go back over it, I find uh, new uh, 
It, it's like it's new. I find new things that the Lord impresses on my heart. And so uh, right there in the first verse, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. You know, whenever we're talking about the gospel, you don't have to have a position to be able to proclaim it. But your posture is the main thing when it comes to you and Jesus Christ. Notice where, where we have been able and made to stand we have uh, we then have a place from which we bowed and we were placed back on our feet look there he says i declare to you the gospel which i preached to you and you received and in which you stand they were no longer just kneeling at the cross uh, accepting this but rather they were standing for it and so it's not your position but it's your posture you don't have to be a, a pastor or a deacon or, uh, you know, even a member of a church body in order to stand before for Jesus Christ. It'll help, but you don't have to have that. Notice it's it's our it's our posture. It's where where we're placed at. It's what we've decided with to do. That with what He's given us. And notice that uh, he also in here, I've, I've just, I don't know why I haven't seen this before, but I got all the way down to verse 10, and I find that, that here Paul says, here's what I used to do. In verse 9, he says, I'm least of the apostles. I used to persecute the church. You remember it was while he was on a trip to persecute the church that he was met by Jesus on the road. And the truth is, he, he, did, he knew he didn't deserve it. Whenever he came, when he came to the light of Christ, he was blinded. But the truth is, he'd been blind to the light of Christ. And then whenever he got right, he says this. He says, I don't, I'm the least of all because I persecuted the church. But then he says in verse 10, but I am what I am by the grace of God. It's only by the grace of God he was whom he was. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that I know the gospel is true is because God has taken so many people who knew they didn't deserve to be saved and saved them. And that's my testimony. I don't deserve this, yet he chose to save me. It's only by the grace of God. You know what the word grace, if you wrote it as an acrostic, and it's the best explanation for it I've ever found is God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is unmerited favor. That's him, him giving us what we could no means ever be good enough to deserve. It's like being grounded and getting to eat ice cream anyway. It, it, or better than that. Come on, you, you get what I'm saying? I'm having a lot of amen in there in the comments. I mean, I'm like, I can't hear you. Hallelujah, I got sound. I'm glad you got sound. Did you hear anything I said? Was it worth an amen? You know, I as Southeast, I like to have my, my shouting squad working, and I'm kind of missing Bob Goodrich because Bob will amen me just when it gets nice and quiet. And so uh, don't get me aggravated. I may need my cheering squad to come on here i'm only what i am because christ and he he's the only one i i can't i couldn't have saved myself you know the army used to have this thing they would say that they, they the guys in the army was so tough they could pull themselves up by their own bootstraps that's impossible to do by the way because my bootstraps are down below me you get you getting with it Jesus is the only one that could pull me up. And so I want to tell you that through the first 11 verses of 1 Corinthians 15, if you'll bear with me, I want to tell you about Jesus right through those verses, okay? He, he mentions some of these things, but I find that there's 
four things that everybody ought to know about Jesus. Now, if you want to just write this down, it's four things everybody ought to know about Jesus. Jesus cares about you. Jesus is a caring Savior. He's not some Savior who would say, you must do this and this and this or else you're not worthy of me. He says, you're not worthy of me, but I'm giving myself to you anyway. He's the caring Christ. You know how I know he's the caring Christ? In Matthew 8, the first like 15 verses of it or so, he, he meets three different people whom he had never been acquainted with before at all and heals them. He just healed them. They come to him being sick or diseased or uh, one even just had a fever and he heals them. You know what? He is the caring Christ. Uh, I remember reading in scripture where he came across a funeral procession and the, the mother was weeping bitterly following this uh, dead child they were on their way to bury. And, and she said, that was my son, my only hope, my only income for my whole family. He was the only one we had hope in, and Jesus gave her hope in something else when he raised him from the dead. Now, wouldn't that be a great funeral? I'd want a lot of people at the funeral where that happened at, right? And you, you op open up the casket and let him out. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that my Jesus can do that. Do you know why he can do that? Is because he is the giver of life. The Bible says there's nothing that has been made that he didn't make. And I, best I can tell, we've been made to breathe. And he gave us that. But he wasn't just the caring Christ. And if you'll read there in chapter 15, you'll see that Paul describes him as being the crucified Christ. And you know, I believe that it was real that he was crucified on a Roman cross. And you can look around any... Any place you would like to that is a church of almost any kind, and they will show a cross somewhere. There's a, there's a big old cross in our church right now at Southeast with names tagged to it of people we're praying for that they'll get saved. And there's, there's a lighted cross up there in our, in our uh, baptismal pool in the background of it. And and there's uh, every church I've ever pastored had a cross in it. My home church, my dad and I built a cross and put up on the stage on, on at Warren's Branch. And, and we, I think it's important to know what that cross stands for. And it stands for the, the torture device that Christ was crucified on. I believe it was real that he had spikes drove through his wrist into the wood. I don't believe they pre-drilled the holes. I don't believe they give him Novocaine to deaden the pain. I, I think they hammered them nails through there, just like you think they have. I think that they nailed him through his feet to that cross, and I think they hung him there. And they they uh, they offered him something that wasn't water to drink, and I, I think you'll find that he uh, he died. He didn't have to have a bone in his body broken because he was the crucified Christ who would fulfill all prophecy about him. He died there and they came by and were breaking the legs of the others so that they would go ahead and die, the ones that were crucified with him, and they thrust a spear through his side. And I think that those things were evident to Thomas, even though he didn't have to see them or put his hand in Jesus' side, or put his hand in the prints of those nails, or maybe the scar of those nails in his wrist. He didn't have to do that because they were there. <clears throat> I've heard it said that there's only a few things man-made that's getting into heaven, and uh, that's going to be the nail holes in Jesus' hands and feet and the spear hole in his side. He is the crucified Christ. And you know... Uh, we we put a lot of stock in that, but if we leave it there, there were a lot of people who were crucified. That was R Rome's best way of doing away with you. There were a lot of people crucified. There was many numbers of people that were crucified. Uh, many of Jesus' disciples were crucified. Peter was uh, crucified. He he asked to be hung upside down because he didn't deserve to be crucified the same way as Jesus, and. Uh, there were many 
I'd say countless thousands, maybe millions of people that were crucified for their crimes. But Jesus didn't stay dead. <laughs> he is risen. He he is the risen Christ. And he, he, he is the caring Christ, and he's the crucified Christ. But he is the conquering Christ, you know? I think we get a precursor of that in those in those um, things that we read in the New Testament and the Gospels about how Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus. And he just said it. He just said it. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Get up out of that grave and come out here. And Lazarus, come out there without even looking like he'd been dead. He should have smelled bad by then. Like that boy in that casket in that funeral procession. I believe that uh, that was a precursor so that we would know he had the power to do that. And a lot of people want to dispute that Jesus is the Christ, but the truth is they can't dispute he's the Christ. Since how he made everything, he did cause all these things to happen to himself. He caused them to happen to himself and, you know, I'm I'm not ever been into wishing anything bad on somebody else, but I'm glad he caused those things to happen to himself because he did it for your sake and for mine. He did it so we could be saved. He is the conquering Christ. When they went to the tomb where he'd been laid on that following Sunday morning, he wasn't there. The proclamation given by the angels was, he is risen. He's the risen Christ. That's what makes his death so so real to us is that he did not stay dead. We know he was dead. The ones who were masters of death and knowing what death looked like shoved a spear through his side and said he's dead. No need to break his legs. He was dead. And, and the ones who were masters of life went and seen that the giver of life had given himself life and raised up out of that tomb. He is the conquering Christ. He conquered sin and death and hell for you and for me so that we might live. But that's not where it ends. That's not where it ends. We, we are going to have a life hereafter. If, if anybody ever wants to plant doubt in your mind that there is a uh, hereafter. There is a hereafter. There's a life after this one. And those that know Jesus are going to be with him. And those that don't, won't be with him. We see it in the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter. It talks about there being a great separation made. And the, then the way it the way it says it makes me think about it like this, that the ones who are not Jesus followers are swept off the floor of heaven forever. And it tells us that everybody's going to be. There's nobody exempt. There's not going to be any doctor's note to keep you from having to be at that meeting. You're going to be there. You're going to be there, and it'll be the end. Or it'll be the beginning. <laughs> it'll either be the end for you, or it'll be the beginning. Well, I want to tell you, though, he is a coming Christ. He is not just a caring Christ. He's not just a crucified Christ. We can't leave him in that tomb, but he is a conquering Christ, and he is the coming Christ. In Revelation 19, it tells us of, a, of the Christ coming on a white horse, and it says this about him. I'd like to tell you it's the Christ because it doesn't say his name there until you've put all this together. It tells us that the one who sat on the white horse was called Faithful and True. And it says on his robe and on his thigh, it was written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We know who that is. I know who that is. I don't think you're going to have to let him get very close to you on a white horse till you're going to know who that is, right? We know who that is. That's Jesus. That's the same Christ whom, Peter, whom Paul met on the road. That's the same Christ whom who, uh, Peter denied three times at his crucifixion. That's the same Christ whom Mary laid in a, a manger in swaddling clothes. And that's the same Christ whom they couldn't find in the tomb. He is a coming Christ. He's on his way. It won't be very long.
it won't be very long. You know, time seems to me like it just keeps going faster and faster. I can't hardly believe this is Wednesday. We uh, we just keep getting faster and faster on time. We've I've already been talking to you for thirty minutes tonight. Uh, we uh, we can't control any of that, but we can control how we spend the time that we have been given. And so tonight, I want you to think about this. We serve a caring Savior. He was crucified. He conquered sin and death and hell. And he's coming again. Are you ready? If you're not ready, and you need to know this Jesus, I know there's a lot of you listening. There may be ones who tune into this later. I want you to know that I'm available to you. You can call my phone, and he is going to put my number up. And so uh, feel free to call me. I'd be happy to help you to invite this Savior into your life so that you too could say, when we get to that point, I know Jesus. I know Jesus, and he knows me. Amen and amen. I want to leave you with a, a little cut out of the paper. It's been sitting here all this time. I hope nobody else has read it before I got it um, because I don't know, want you to know who it was that said it. This is a quote. He says, maybe we don't need a vaccine. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of the world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only thing in the world that really matters, Jesus. Anybody got any idea who it was that said that? Do you know? Do you know? I'm betting you wouldn't guess it was the Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, the wrestler, said that. And if he can get it right, I'm sure you all can get it right. All right? We need to focus on Jesus. I believe if we'll just focus on Jesus, everything else we'll see a little clearer. Amen? we have any other prayer requests tonight? I have a whole list of them. All right. Let me read these off to you, and then we'll dismiss in a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask tonight if Jimmy and Matt would type a prayer in as we dismiss. And uh, I want to pray over this list. On the list, we have Wyatt Chuckluck, Beverly Yawn, Misty Myers and family, the Chuckluck family, Katie Tonkins and family, and the Bench family. Uh, let's remember all those as we pray to dismiss tonight. And I'm going to hang on here until we uh, see Matt and Jimmy both put up something in the comments, put their prayer up in the comments. So go to the Lord in prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all the ways you blessed us today. And, and Lord, help us if we've overlooked any of those that we would see them clearer tomorrow. Father God, I just uh, come before you and and present these ones that were have asked for prayer tonight. You know each and every individual's needs, and we just pray that you tend to those needs, so that they would be uh, they would get the answer, and Lord, that we would be able to give you the credit. And Father, I know there are many others. We we have a rolling list of prayer requests that weren't read tonight. I just pray that you'd be with each and every one that's on there. For those that need healing, that you would just touch them. And Father, for those that are uh, that are uh, having trouble, I just pray that you'd strengthen them and, and Lord, provide their way for them. And, and Father, for the ones that are in a uh, time of loss, that you would just give them a great measure of comfort tonight. And Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you for how wonderfully you have treated us. You know we understand we don't deserve any of the things you've done for us, so we just want to thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him. Thank you for him dying on a cross for my sin. And Lord, thank you that he is not dead, but he has rose again and lives today. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. So thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate uh, each and every one of you. And I, we got the Rusty Bowling family also been added. I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in so faithfully to these. And uh, I'm, uh, 
I'm proud to say I belong to Southeast Baptist Church. They're some of the best people in the whole world, as, as far as I can tell. And uh, I, I really appreciate you all. I'm looking forward to getting to see you again Sunday. And uh, I told you that things are going to be a little bit different. I didn't show them the box, did I? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take our offering up in a box. This box will be sitting at the back of the church. I haven't finished it yet. i got to do some sanding on it. But it's got a slot cut in the top of it so you can put your offering in it. And that'll be sitting at the back, probably in the foyer somewhere or something for you to be able to put your offering in. I hope Matt's still on here. He I, I just learned that if you uh, if you cut it off too quick and he's still typing, <laughs> it won't. It actually erases all of what you want to put up there. So I do appreciate every one of you. Uh, hmm. We'll see you Sunday.